Hey guys, it's your favorite gold miner, prospector, and geologist, Jeff Williams. And today, we're going to answer some questions that a lot of you viewers had out there about the drift mine, specifically about the hoisting system. So let's get into it. Oh, and before we get into it, how many people know what this is for, okay? Go ahead and leave your comment down below. I'll tell you at the end, don't cheat now. And we'll see how many people can figure this thing out, okay? I know, already a whole bunch of jaw jacking. Now, you guys remember this guy, right? This is the jackhammer we use all the time down here. My wife went online and said, mm, 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 you need something bigger. PG, PG. So we got something bigger. Ooh, look at that. Brand spanking new. I just put oil in it. Can you tell? <laughs> look how big it is. It's a monster. And it's got springs on it too. You see the springs? But it's super heavy. Holy cow, that'll work the heck out of you. That's gotta weigh a good 55 pounds. But I'll tell you what, <laughs> it started to cut through this like that. I had to turn it off. Well, I don't know how I'm gonna get it to work up here. So you guys are gonna have to give me an idea so I can drive it up like a stoper. Ooh, that thing is heavy. It's gonna make my body hot. It's so hot, it's so hot, my body, ooh. And check it out, I got a new hard hat. Isn't that cool? It looks like Kevlar, don't it? The downside is it's not IMSHA approved. Yeah, but it, I think it looks cool. To keep things uh, on the up and up, we're gonna have to stick with the old one. Yes, uh, <coughs> Johnson, give me my hard hat. Hard hat, no, lard ass. Lard ass, no, hard hat. This is a 30 gallon drum. Brand new, it's not repurposed, because that's very important. I'll explain that here in the middle. And these are harmonic balancers off of a Chrysler. A lot of you guys figured that out. That's pretty smart. This bar is called a trunnion. This is called a bale. This is what connects the whole thing together. And then we welded an apron on the front here. Do you see this? And there's a reason why we did this. And the bale is connected to the bucket with these D-rings right here. And of course, the whole thing goes into these side plates that are welded on. Now, a lot of you guys wrote in, you said, Jeff, I'm digging a vertical shaft or incline shaft, and I wanna be able to dump my skip bucket like you do. This type of system has been used for over 150 years. It's super, super simple to build. It works every time. And if you don't wanna install a skip cart, a skip bucket is the next thing. Now you can use these in a vertical shaft, but they're mostly used in an incline shaft. And I know you guys seen a lot of those wooden rails on these mine explorer videos. And I'm gonna explain all that here in a second. And that way, if you guys want to build your own you can and there's some do's and don'ts out there that you're gonna really want to hear before you get out there and start hot dogging it how'd you get beat by a dude named long shank you hot dog and you cut off your bean frank now our bar goes all the way through but you don't have to do it that way but that's the easiest way to do it and of course we welded plates on the inside too to make it stronger now i know a lot of you guys are trying to figure out what these harmonic balancers are for i'm gonna go over that here in a second now down here on the bottom you'll see this tiny little rod that's been welded on the bottom with this little rubber buffer. And you're really gonna want to put one of these on if you're gonna run one of these skip buckets. We've got four by four rails and we've actually cut a 45 degree on it and we left an inch and a quarter and the bucket slides up and down that now if you're running a skip bucket on a vertical shaft you're gonna have to realign where the bale goes and if it's a incline shaft then it's not a big deal but the reason why it's important on where the bale sits if it's vertical because you want the lip of that skip bucket to sit out and that's what these two holes are for this is in the very center of the 30 gallon drum and this is offset to the front now I know you're saying, Jeff, if that's the case, then why is the butt end sticking out like that, huh? Ah, very good. When you fill that thing up, all the weight transfers inside and pushes the butt to the rail and the lip away. Now, allow me to demonstrate, I know. And yeah, I know this is boring stuff, but there's a lot of guys out there who are trying to dig their own drift mine, but they don't know how to do it, especially with a skip bug. I've seen guys use five gallon buckets and do it forever. <laughs> But this is really an easy way to do it. And if you can weld, oh my gosh, it's super, super simple. But you can bolt these together too. So I'll put some material in it and I'll show you what I mean. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a black little spider down there. He's a big one too. Don't ask me how he got down there. He's waiting for lunch. There's all kinds of spiders down there. Stuff just moving around. <laughs> and one more thing. You see how the rails are vertical? And then they go to about an 80 degree dip. The reason why we did that 
for the sump is so that it, when it sits in the bottom, the bale automatically rocks to the front of the shaft and gets out of the way. Also helps move all the material to the front of the apron that we welded in there so I can move even more material. You see how that works? And the more weight that sits in this thing, the more the ass sits to the back. Yeah, PG, PG. See what I mean? That bell normally wants to go forward. You see how the butt of the drum is actually being forced into the rail? And the nose of it, there's actual gap right there. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a gap right there between the rail and the drum. And the reason why that is, is like I said, we drilled our holes about an inch, a little over an inch, maybe inch and a quarter forward. And what that does is offset the center of gravity. So now this is your pulling line and all your additional weight is forcing the drum to the rear. Do you see how that works? So what happens is, is this is the area that's rubbing on the rail. And then this keeps the bucket from rotating left or right, which keeps the trunnions from hitting any additional timber on the way up. Does that make any sense? Now, if this was just an incline shaft, we wouldn't have to do all this additional drilling. We just let the bucket ride up and down on the rail. And that's how the old timers used to do it too. But because we're running a vertical shaft, we don't want the head of that bucket smashing into one of the sets, the timbers of the sets, especially with that big apron on there. So that's why we want the butt sticking in and the head sticking out. Or is that the butt sticking out and the head sticking in? PG, PG! And you can see where the rail goes all the way across. Like I said, it just keeps the barrel from rotating. And you can weld a hook on the bottom if you want to lower stuff down into the shaft. Now this is a 30 gallon drum and our rails are 16 inches apart measured from the outside. By having the rail spaced 16 inches on four by fours, which are not really four by fours, but come on, you know what I mean. And that makes that ride exactly in the middle of those rails. Now I know a lot of guys are saying, Jeff, you still have an answer to question. What are these harmonic balancers for, huh? That bucket gets going so fast, it vibrates and it shakes the whole mine. So we have to put vibration dampeners on there. <laughs> We're gonna go top side. I'm gonna show you how that works. 40 feet of ladder. Ugh. Yeah, that'll test your metal each time. Do I got any takers? I don't wanna come down 40 feet, work on the ground, get all this gold. <laughs> now, if you're running a vertical shaft with a skip bucket, when that skip bucket gets close to the top where it's going to dump, you need to get the butt of that skip bucket out. And the reason why is because if it goes up and you try to latch it in to dump it, it might just sit there swinging in the wind. You know what I mean? And you don't want your butt swinging in the wind. <laughs> PG, PG. So what you're going to do is you want to get your butt to stick out. I know, where is this going, right? So we put these in right here to push our butt out on our drum. So here's the rails for the bucket itself to, to ride on. And as it gets close to the top of the dumping mechanism, then we have these guys, which the trunnions will ride up and down on. You see that? And by doing so, it gets the butt to stick out. <laughs> and there's a reason why you want your butt to stick out. Now, you see what I meant about the apron? You want the apron and the lip of the front of the bucket to stick out away from here so it doesn't catch any of those timber sets. Now I want you to watch as the trunnions catch on this and it pushes the butt of the bucket out. See that? But now the butt of the bucket <laughs> is sticking out. You got your butt sticking out. So it's sticking out far enough to where the bucket, if I was to release it on these trunnions, the bucket would naturally want to fall forward now. Now you see why you want your butt to stick out? That way you fall forward, right? With this thing sticking out this way, the front of the bucket is gonna wanna naturally tilt forward because the trunnions are right in the very middle of the bucket. That way, when it goes up to the locks and I release the bucket, it's gonna wanna fall forward. You see that? It's an automatic dump, and I'll show you that in a second. As the bucket comes up, it rides along this rail and then latches into this guy right here. See that? 
and I'll show you how that works. And that is the dumping mechanism, and that's what's been used for over 150 years. Now it's really tight up here at the very top of the hoist house. And when this comes up, there's no room for anybody to be in here, so I gotta leave. But once it dumps, it goes down a chute, and there's a divider in the chute. And based on if it's waste rock or ore, my wife will say left or right on the chute. And then it'll go to the waste rock pile or it'll go to the wash plant. I know, enough job, Jack and Jeff. Come on, we want to see this thing work. Ah, jeez, tough crowd. Now, if this was an incline shaft, then I wouldn't need the springs. But on a vertical, yeah, I like to do it this way. But that's why when you see a lot of these mine exploring videos, you'll see these two notches and then you'll see these bars sitting there. And that's how a skip bucket dumps. Now, I know a lot of you guys are out there saying, Jeff, you never did answer the question about the harmonic balancers. Yeah, there's a good reason those are on. And it's because of these two rails right here. I'm gonna show you how that works. Now, keep in mind, you don't have to do that with your own skip bucket but we did it with ours just to make sure it was centered. Watch this. It's hard to believe that just 40 feet down, there's an old tertiary channel just loaded with gold. Isn't that cool? Now you don't have to use tridents on your bucket. You could actually do what the old timers used to do with their shaft sinking buckets and put a chain on the bottom. In fact, some mining companies use it today. It looks something like this. And that's why sometimes you'll see flat cars down in the mines, not just to haul lumber and supplies, but some of them you could actually put skip buckets on. In fact, in our early days when we were digging down here, that's what we did. We had a little flat car. It looks something like this. It's a flatbed tram car. Did you see them in all the mines all the time. You probably didn't know how to use them. This is how you use them. So when I get a full bucket loaded up, wheel it over here to the shaft, take your bale, Hook it up, ring the bell, and you're good to go. Now, if you plan on digging your own drip mine, I highly recommend that you read this PDF file. I'm gonna leave a link down below from the Idaho School of Mines. It's gonna give you step-by-step -step illustrations on how to timber properly in every kind of scenario, right down to spiling if you want to. And make sure you got plenty of ventilation down wherever you're digging too. At least a four inch line. I mean, come on, you can buy them a Home Depot or Lowe's. Who wants to see me dig for gold nuggets, huh? Well, you better smash that like button. Smash it hard. I don't know how I'm gonna get in there. It's too small. Are you but for me, man, that thing's heavy. Look at that thing. Time to call my wife down here and tell her to pull this darn thing out. It's stuck. It's my union sanction break. Did you guys figure out what this thing is for, huh? Well, if any of you guys worked underground long enough, you should know exactly what that's for. Hey, did you guys have a good Halloween? Did you get your pants scared clean off? I know I did. Slim was messing with me all day. He plays that banjo real good like. I don't know why, but he kept asking me to squeal like a little pig. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, did you guys know that we're not only giving away Gold Monster 1000 metal detectors, but now we're giving away a Keen 140S dry washer and a Keen puffer with electric motor on it. And next year, we're going to start giving away the Gold Monster 2000. Isn't that cool? I bet you didn't know that, did you, son of a boy? I know you're saying, Jeff, how do I get my hands on something like that? That's really simple. Just look for the little icon at the end of the video that looks something like that. You're going to smash it, smash it hard. Make a $10 pledge and you instantly qualify to get your hands on any of that stuff. Not only that, but we also give 10 bags of pay dirt away, each with a silver bar. And with gold pushing $4,000 an ounce, wow, it's my boy. You'd be crazy not to sign up because the bags of pay dirt we get out of this drift mine are world famous. Have you seen them lately? They look like this. Yeah! And I want to give a shout out to Sir William Wallace. You know who you are over at the Aquarius Hotel. And I'll see you on the next video.